Bichon picks up and they've got a short field. They've got another goal. It's tied up at 12. I cannot believe what I'm seeing Can Lola Dam chase that one down? That is a score for Hasliger Elverkel. Fantastic run by Julia Lerz. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. And we believe that that requires knocking down the paywall. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch, and we want them to go viral. When you become a member, you enable us to improve our working relationships with tournament organizers, events and federations. And you'll help us to produce live stories for Ultimate fans, and to generate new fans with our enhanced content. We, we are, are a group of Ultimate, Ultimate players, players, coaches and video enthusiasts, and we want to bring you coverage on a more consistent basis. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Ciao ragazzi, support the community. And subscribe Ulti TV, there's lots of the videos, posting, everything, check it out. <laughs> they are the best one. Woo! If you want to grow Ultimate Sports, uh, become a member of Ulti TV. Regardez Ulti TV. Deviens un membre Ulti TV. Stop Ulti TV. Follow me. Ero Ginkime. Ulti Meta Vandroamena. Si quieres ayudar a Ulti TV, puedes ser miembro de Ulti TV. Thumbs up for Ulti TV. Everyone, follow Ulti TV on Instagram, on YouTube. They've got everything. Best content. Like their pictures if you love frisbee. Just do it. We're counting on you. Give me a love for Ulti TV. Became member of Ulti TV. Mamma mia. Contribue au développement d'Ultimate avec Ulti TV. Like and subscribe, Ulti TV, the best in the world. We want to grow Ultimate. We want to grow Ultimate. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We have our signature style two camera setup. With thousands of hours of experience. And our crew is globally dispersed to facilitate coverage everywhere around the world. We can also scale back our broadcast with just one elevated camera. Or scale up with two fields, two cameras and two commentators on each. We work with local teams and we all have the same mission, to grow the sport and bring it to new people by providing live coverage and new stories. Become a member today on our Patreon page. And fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories, ideas and live coverage to the eyes of the ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond.
Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to glorious London. We've come to the west of the city, to the Grasshoppers Rugby Football Club, to bring you the London invite with 16 of Europe's best teams, eight open and eight women's duking it out on the last stop to Worlds. Bracket play starts today, pool play all wrapped up yesterday, and we've given the choice to you, the people, to vote on which games we, which semi-finals we stream this morning, and you have chosen Yaka from Noisy Lusec in France up against Dublin's Gravity of Ireland. A very good morning to everyone watching on our YouTube channel. It is a delight to have you along. My name is Benjamin Reese, and I am joined this morning, first up, by Rachel Douglas. Morning, Doug. Morning. How are you doing? Yeah, great. We've got uh, some more sunshine here this morning, although it was sunny yesterday morning and then the wind kicked in. So we're all sort of sitting here with bated breath to see how the conditions fare today. Uh, yesterday, an incredible gusty day, uh, waiting to see if today will, will, will shape up to be similar. But at the moment, it's, it's looking nice. There's a bit of a breeze, but the sun is shining and we're all just very happy to be here for the second day of London Invite. Yeah, we had a we had a wonderful day yesterday. Uh, a schedule written in such a way that we streamed every team. Uh, six of those went out for free on our YouTube. The other two were uh, a little secret for our Patreon subscribers, which are ever growing. And we thank you again for your ongoing support in helping us bring free live ultimate to the people. And we've got a yeah a couple of mouth watering semi finals up uh, going on behind us. We have Kusp Shout versus Box Vienna, whereas we are streaming Yaka versus Gravity. Yaka had a pretty strong day yesterday. Won all their games and won them all pretty handily. Yeah, Yaka looking very strong. They are um, missing um, one of their key players, Aline Mondio, uh, known as Rasta. She's part of the uh, France World Games squad and is uh, at a training this weekend, so not able to be here for this tournament. Uh, but Yaka really proving the depth of their of their squad. You know, uh, Mondio is, is such an important presence for them, but, but also what they're proving here this weekend is that they can also do the job without her. And there's been some uh, really, really impressive play, really visionary play uh, from across across the line. So uh, it's a great vote of confidence for the Yaka team, you know, when you can kind of, you know, you might have a superstar player, but actually uh, there's, there's a huge amount of skill, experience and, and know-how uh, in every single player on their roster. Yeah, bringing uh, s some of France's best along with... Uh some international flavour, players from Austria, Germany, the Netherlands, kind of all over the place, among others. Whereas Gravity, it's a very kind of tight core, a much smaller roster in terms of numbers, but they've got that chemistry of, that comes with having played together for uh, what seems like an eternity. Yeah, we saw some on the stream yesterday, we saw some rather scrappy play from Gravity, uh, having to, to really kind of uh, work hard to, to, to move the disc and get, and get free from uh, their opponents. The wind having a big impact on, on their game, but uh, definitely still showing absolute class, you know, able to, to get it, move it between and, and uh, come away with a win. So uh, it's just looking like it's going to be a, a, a great matchup. Yeah, Gravity uh, went down 10-8 to Kusp Shout yesterday before bouncing back with a 9-8 win over Bristol and 9-7 the victory over Spice to book their spot in the semi-finals today. No crossovers, so top two in each pool go into the top bracket and the bottom two go into the bottom bracket. So a slightly unforgiving schedule, but it really does put importance onto those pool play games yesterday. Onya Gilhini's going to pick up here from the brick mark as they just try and work out exactly where the brick mark is. Underway here with Castillo putting on the force. And Gallini's kind of struggling to find some options downfield, looking for a gainer down the far side for Cleona Doyle. Doyle, throw that rides a little bit, but not a problem for Daly. Trying to find a way to get off the sideline. Nice little lead pass there to Gallini. Visor matching that pink jersey. Doyle. Gallini comes through and then pushes back. That throw sunk a little bit, but... Good work for by, by Gallini to get her hands underneath. Doyle's doing a lot of work, now pushing it back. Gallini wants to zip that in the inside channel. Brilliantly done by Gravity, a nice clean hold there. Gallini to Doyle for the opening score. They made that look pretty easy. They did. Uh, there was a moment where I was a little bit nervous for them, not seeing sort of any movement downfield. But of course, it just seems like their their play on that instance was to just move through the handlers and try and get it in that front corner. Um, and, and managed to do that kind of on a bounce. The, the handler went up the line, didn't get it up the line, but just took that single step sort of into the field um, and was able to get a, a fairly laser pass 
uh, just into that open space. So uh, great work for Gravity to just keep their heads and keep calm. These opening points on the first game of the second day of a tournament can be really challenging. Um, often it's sort of tired legs, tired minds, and perhaps a little bit of a lack of focus. Uh, but Gravity showing that not to be an issue this morning, uh, definitely coming out uh, with some intention and, and putting that in nicely. Yeah, having a look at the Gravity roster there, and as we saw on that first point, Onya Gilhini is going to do a lot of the handling work for this side, uh, as she did for the uh, victorious I Ireland women's team back at 2019 EUC. Uh, give her time and space on the disc, and she will shred you, but they've got a number of more than capable options elsewhere in the handling court and downfield. We saw Doyle do a lot of work, and that time it felt like they were just kind of content to let three players play it between them and let the other players kind of be a potential distraction elsewhere. So a, a look that I think you see more and more teams go for now. It's definitely, it's something that t takes a kind of a level of maturity on the field. You often see teams, particularly when things get really tight, moving so frantically and it's not an efficient way to use your energy and it's not an efficient way to use the space. So sometimes the most valuable thing you can do as a, as a, a player on the field is keep your defender out the way, stay out the way yourselves and let your teammates get on with it. Um, so yeah, definitely it's, it's something that uh, perhaps more teams are, are looking to utilize um, and, and it kind of just shows a level of, of calm and collective uh, thought process in the offense. Delaval is going to pick this disc up from the brick mark. Lovely pitches here, but uh, always a bit of confusion since there isn't a, a, a brick mark demarcated. Good word, that. Valet. Oh, and a simple drop there by Delaval. Just bounced out of her hands. I think she was already looking at the next pass. Good early break drop opportunity here. For the Dubliners, working underneath his daily. Kind of takes off up line, trying to put it into that window. Jumped into the end zone by Claire Gillini. Maybe not. Just a little discussion about whether she caught it outside and jumped in, or, yeah, I think quickly conceding that perhaps. Maybe not. So, in their haste to get going, just making sure that everyone's back in their positions because everyone stops, so that makes it a stoppage. Claire Gallini checks in, wanted that little dish off, but they need to clear out of that space now. Looking clustered and cluttered downfield, trying to sink one to the back of the end zone, where it's actually well defended by Yaka. Did very well to play tight defense on that front cone. Yeah, perhaps that's the sort of the, the counter example to what we just saw in the other end zone. Playing very small, lots of people moving around right, right near the disc, which makes it incredibly hard uh, to get the disc out. Um, and that, that does generate a turn. Against a side like Yanka, you do feel that you have to take those red zone break opportunities when they're presented to you. But of course, always easier said than done. Break towards the near side to the Austrian Meissel. Gravity going with the zone that seems to be their trademark defensively. Plays into the windy conditions we have here today. Takes the gift to Valet. Perhaps this uh, zone is a little bit of recognition of, of the, the absence of Mondio, who is such a critical handler for the Yaka side. Perhaps the zone thought process is, perhaps the, the handler set's just, just going to be missing that key link. But at the moment, looking, looking fairly decisive. In last year's uh, XUCF semi-final, Yaka played Gravity, and uh, while Gravi uh, Yaka came out on top, they did have a couple of problems at times coming up against the Gravity zone. A little bit of a collision there, but Delaval finds a nice thread through Opening up a little bit to Dabin. Wants to dish it off, finds his ends. And now they're getting it in flow nicely. Valet shooting for the back of the end zone. This might float a little bit, and Meissel can't reel it in at the back. That pass was attempted, I don't even know how many times yesterday, and I think almost every single time. In fact, I might go out on a limb and say every single time. It, it turned over. It, it's, it's a really difficult corner. The, the wind is, is not as strong as it was yesterday, but it is still gusty, and it really seems to affect that corner. Any of those uh, roll curve passes, trying to get around a defender, they always fly over their heads. Um, so that's a really challenging look and a, yeah, generating a turn. Lessons of yesterday may perhaps not learnt. Nice break begins this possession, but that disc is tipped, but fortunately for gravity, into the hands of Kelly. Struggling to get free downfield against this tight coverage from Yaka. But there's an opportunity now to put it deep. This throw might float towards this sideline. And Valet uh, needed to get that hand in there, I think. Otherwise, there's a good, there's a good chance that Gravity would have come down with it.
Delavelle back to the ends. Oh, very nearly was able to get the block there. But Pereira Slavets was just a beat late. Pops it to Valet. And Valet downfield to Meisel. Meisel shooting for the end zone again. This time the shot is weighted perfectly. Clearly, uh, maybe just a bit, bit of judgment. They've kind of gauged the wind a little bit better. Either way, it works for Yaka to bring this game at one apiece. Yeah, that was a great shot. Um, definitely just a little, little bit more tailored to the wind. Um, it wasn't trying to go around a defender. It was a flatter shot. It just needed to kind of go high enough to get down there uh, without interruption. D didn't try and put a lot of roll curve on it, uh, which meant that it was able to sit nicely on the wind rather than getting carried away. But uh, Yaka doing an incredible job of finding the spaces in that in that gravity zone. Clearly, the, the zone was doing an ex uh, excellent work to to corral them and to kind of uh, limit options uh, around uh, the middle. But Yaka being very patient, happy to dump it, happy to pop it to uh, someone coming into that cup uh, and eventually find those those opportunities through the middle uh, for to kind of carve that up a little bit. But um, the gravity zone being very effective at, at containing Yaka, um, but ultimately Yaka just showing that kind of experience and um, calm, calm headedness just to work it through. Yeah, wind beginning to pick up a little bit here. So something for both teams to, to factor in. Do you get the feeling that uh, if you play your, the majority of your ultimate in Ireland, you're probably used to less than favourable conditions? Yeah, I'm sure that's true. But I don't know. I feel like Paris, I'm sure, has their, uh, has their own sort of challenging conditions. Uh, I'm sure they're, they're also not strangers to training in a bit of, bit of exciting weather. But certainly um, that will be a fairly normal occurrence for the Irish. You'd imagine so as uh, Gravity catching the ball and the first pass goes to Galini. A nice initiating cut underneath from Linehan. Oh, sorry, it's Pichot in fact. And Pichot finds Chambers. Just gone the far sideline. In towards the centre. There's Emily O'Brien. Emily O'Brien wants to zing this into the end zone. Still not quite in, but Chambers will find the next pass to Pichot. Clinical that time from Gravity. Their offense seems to be rocking and rolling so far. Using the space really nicely. Uh, just seems like every single time someone had the disc, there was so much room for, for the cutters to, to get sort of active and, and try and make space. And a breakthrough after breakthrough, Gravity really taking on the force and managing to get the disc uh, to the side that that uh, Yaka are, are trying to prevent them from getting it to, uh, meaning that a lot of those passes, the sort of the throw was really well executed and uh, the cutter's able to receive the disc without too much pressure. You know, it's the side that the, the defender's not, not able to, to cover. Uh, so yeah, a, a beautiful point from Gravity really showing um, how well they're able to use the space and, and the, the might of their breaks. If you push the disc all the way to that break side, what you do is you create a, this massive inside channel there where the defender's on the other side of you and you've got a nice little space for that cutter to attack. And rather than being a really tricky, shapely inside-out throw, actually it's almost just a flat pop into that space. Yeah, absolutely. It, it can just completely open up the field and gravity utilising that not just once or twice, but multiple times through that point, uh, really enabling them already set up in the space really nicely to just absolutely maximise that and, and play that point how they wanted to. So 2-1 to gravity here. Onya Galini will pull. This one's going to stay in bounds. Fielded and back in play here for Yaka. Switching some faces through. Got a large roster, so trying to keep everyone involved as that one is just knocked to the turf. I think uh, Chambers was just able to get a little mitt in there. But turn right back. Oh, some of these fakes, I'm, they're convincing me. <laughs> Valet. Just goes to Delaval. Now Gravity try and trap them on the sideline. There's no room there. Chambers gets her second block this point. Maybe getting a little bit greedy trying to thread through that zone. Galini picks up. Chambers makes a strong underneath cut. Was the continuation up line. Not there at the first opportunity. Galini tries to squirrel her way free. All oh, this throw is going to rise. Is there anyone to back it up? No. 
Uh, Galini's going to call the foul on the coverage from Hia. Challenging one. There may have been there may have been contact, but I'm not sure that that disc was actually catchable. That ro that rose right over their heads, and they sort of. I don't. Not sure about that one. And uh, turns out neither are they because the call is retracted. Yeah. Again, it's a really difficult perspective, you know, when you feel that contact on field and you don't get the disc. It's 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 good to call, you know, it's good to have that quick discussion. But uh, I do think that that one was was already kind of flying over them. And this time, Yaka want to work quickly against the zone. Galini maybe gets caught too far underneath it. No, she read that brilliantly. This zone is definitely causing Yaka problems, but unfortunately, their offense after the turn is also struggling. That time Fichot just got way too much of that underside available for the wind. I mean, that was a rushed option if I ever saw one. Mysel wants to shoot across field. I think that I can just about find the option. Through all the coverage in the middle of the field, I couldn't see who they were shooting for, but Mysel could, and finds Vallejo, I think, in the end for the goal. Yeah, I'm actually not sure how much uh how much whether she saw uh, saw her player or if that was just there's the space and I see some white shirts in the vicinity uh, but it was a very decisive look uh, yeah great play from from Yaka to kind of tidy up what was becoming a slightly scrappy point yeah it feels like the pattern of this game so far is uh, gravity zone generating turns but the but the uh, unable to bank them in when Yaka just kind of grinding these points out a little bit here while Gravity's offense so far has been untroubled, although it would not surprise me if Yaka can get a turn on this uh, Gravity O-line. We know how effective they can be afterwards. Yaka definitely making more errors than we've seen from them uh, so far this tournament. However, Gravity are getting those turns, but as you say, at the moment, it's just perhaps the that offensive uh, attempt after the turn is just a little bit too frantic, a little bit too rushed. Um, they want to get the disc moving quickly, but at the moment they're, they're allowing that to make them sort of make some rushed choices. Um, moving the disc quickly does not mean rushing, and I think uh, there's a, an adjustment there for gravity to make. But they do have, they are generating those opportunities. So Paula Bass gets ready to ball. Darts International played with Yaka for a fair few seasons now. Balance catches the pull, finds Claire Gallini. This one, oh, this might sail a little bit. Bass can't get there. Brilliant grab by Daly. The two of them going up against each other, and Daly got the better of Bass. Claire Gallini's got the swing available to, to Keeley if she wants it. Instead, goes back to Balance. Now Keeley gets the disc. Trying to sneak that one in there, but good work from Yaka to get that underneath line. At least Becker. Yeah, you could see that definitely sort of that defense happening in motion. Becker sees that coming, perhaps was baiting that a touch. Definitely had that inside line and wasn't afraid to take it. So Gravity's O line finally makes the mistake. Will Yaka punish them? Popped off towards the far sideline. Here is Becker. Looking, wanted that dump off, but instead goes to Bass on the far sideline. Now finds an option in the center. Forced to hold for a little while here. Still count must be rising, but Delaunay is able to get rid of it. Here's Gonzalez. Gonzalez to Bass. I wonder if they can see it in that little hole. Eventually, Gonzalez is the target and goes back to Bass. Really trying to manipulate these defenders around with those fakes. Becker pops it into Gonzalez. Lovely little inside through there. Might get a little bit of space. Back to Bass. Slowly grinding their way down the field here, Yaka. It's not. It's not been fluid by any stretch of the imagination, but they are keeping possession. Here's Labonia. Oh, that might throw, might sail to Bass, and it's well knocked to the ground by Daly. A different zone look there from 
Gravity uh, marking out the handlers, but Zoni downfield being very, very effective at, at, at slowing down and, and forcing Yaka's handlers to, to really work that disc around and ultimately making a, making an execution error. So Yaka go back to this zone of their own. Trying to stretch it towards the sideline. Brilliant bid by Daly, although it doesn't get there. Yeah, huge play. I'm not sure that perhaps was, was already irretrievable, but uh, yeah, a massive effort. Certainly cannot fault the effort. Definitely not when you're on a stream. You've got to make those plays. Fast shooting down the sideline and threads it into Esther Van Wyk. The game's first break goes Yakka's way and they lead 3-2. Paul Abbas really uh, in their element in that sort of central part of the field. We saw yesterday on the stream Paul Abbas taking some beautiful shots upwind, really well weighted, right into sort of right into the side, right around all the defenders uh, for, for several scores. That seems to be a tried and tested move that they know they have in their arsenal, um, and it's been really critical for Yaka, particularly in points when perhaps things have been getting a bit uh, slowed down a bit by the defence and perhaps a little bit messy. Uh, Paul Abbas making some decisive moves from, from the midfield. Yeah, it feels like Gravity do have a tendency to get into these slightly slower, grindy games. I think it's part of a, a function of the way they play. They play a lot of zone, which kind of tends to take some time out of the game. Uh, and they're, they're not necessarily afraid of taking shots, uh, which are not, uh, you know, 100% options, but, you know, trying to trust handlers to make tricky throws or trust receivers to make difficult plays downfield and then trusting their defense to win them the field position battle afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, it's it's interesting. We were discussing yesterday a little bit about uh, teams and players that aren't afraid to turn over um, and how that can really kind of change the dynamic of, of a game and, and really bring some sort of dynamic um, elements to the play. Uh, you know, knowing that you, you can take those slightly riskier options because you trust your players uh, to, to work their darndest to go and get it. And if they don't, then you trust them to go and get it back. So it does um, kind of create sometimes a slightly scrappier uh, approach, but but it also means teams like Yaka, who, who, are, who can be so clinical and can really kind of steamroll, it means it keeps them guessing and keeps them uh, having to be sort of alert to all options. So the pool goes up from Tisson. More zone coming out from Yaka. Trying to beat Gravity at their own game. As Galini's got a brilliant shot down the sideline. Hits Merkin right in stride. And now she's taking off for the end zone herself. And big demonstrative fake there. There's a poach. I wonder if they want to take the reset backwards instead. No, they want to shoot to the end zone. Is it in? Daly's on the end zone line and they're going to call it good. That ties us up at three apiece. Yeah, called called in by uh, De Laval there, recognizing that the gravity player had just done enough to get her toes behind the line when she received that. So a uh, nice spirit to sort of not not try and force another throw out of them there, just immediately recognizing the play. Uh, and beautiful, beautiful options from gravity as you as you mentioned, just kind of showing Yaka what they can do, we can do uh, that up the line. Um, shot it's just perfectly weighted, really well situated off of a, a, a beautifully timed cut. Uh, great, a great way to, to, to get the disc past some of that tricky defense um, and, and into the red zone for for the score. So the wind is definitely picked up. It is uh, blowing our little commentary gazebo. It's trying to rest it from its shackles, but uh, fortunately it is well tied and weighted down. Yeah, I think perhaps on the stream it might be a little bit unclear. I mean, you can see the trees in the background there moving around a lot. The, 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 the breeze seems to be coming from sort of this far right side, this camera side uh, towards the, uh, the, the clubhouse and the goals uh, downfield. Um, it's sort of a, a crosswind, but there's definitely also a direction to it. So it's, uh, it's a challenge presented to both teams, but they were playing in, in this yesterday, so hopefully you know, they're already prepared to make those adjustments. Yeah, misjudgment on that pull, however, by Yaka. But Leba recovers and plays a little one-two with Bass. The two of them just swinging back and forth, getting micro gains in terms of uh, yardage, but keeping retaining possession. 
Lowering the stall count, that throw for Bass. Wow, just about finds Gonzalez. Now here's Castillo, we know that she can jack in and she puts a little bit of air underneath this. Well read though, by Claire Gillini. Yaka trying to prevent gravity from getting this break back. Staying very active on the mark, but good work there just to lead the receiver to space. It's Emily O'Brien. Tries to zip that one back to Gallini, but it's tipped and goes back into O'Brien's hands. All perfectly legal because there was a, a touch in the, in the middle there. Now going up line, juggled and can't reel it in. Uh, it's just a foul that's called on that. That you can see that moment where uh, having a, a quick reflect to think is that did that actually impact me? But O'Brien, after a moment, um, deciding yes, actually, there needs to be a foul call here. So a little bit of discussion. Uh, Guacolea is the player involved in the discussion. Seeing it again on the replay now. Yeah, I think from from the replay, I would I would say that she didn't have control, but whether that's as a result of some shouldering or, or, or what is unclear, it's you know that's definitely a, a challenge to, to to resolve. But on field, they've they've resolved that as a contested foul. Uh, so gravity stay with the disc. And now just a quick discussion to confirm what, what stall count it should come in on, which is coming in on two. In the hands of Claire Gallini. Trying to get another upline cut. Finds the inside window, but bounces off Keeley's hands. And Bass Yaka. <laughs> wasting no time. Yeah, one a strike while the iron is hot. And Bass was frustrated with herself for that one. A, a roly-poly of frustration from Bass. Don't don't see the roly the frustrated roly poly too often, but uh, uh, was uh, trying to find Van Wyk deep. The two of them have connected already this game, but uh, not to be on that occasion. In space for Chambers, nice thread downfield. Gravity's offense trying to get going now. There is a rather hat. There is a green hat camouflage sitting forlornly in the middle of the field as that deep put down the far sideline can't connect. But it will at least get gravity some very handy yardage. Yeah, caught in that back corner right as the wind's picking up. That is a really, really difficult area to get out of. Um, and the defense know it. They're putting a lot, a lot of pressure um, on Yaka. You pointed out the sideline of death yesterday and well it looks like that might hold true today. Yeah it's uh if it's the sideline if that far sideline is the sideline of death I don't know what that corner is just it's it's the coffin corner isn't it? Coffin corner it's it's brutal we've seen turn after turn of teams trying to get out of that corner uh, defense are being really smart about recognizing what a challenge you know even without defense getting those passes straight into the wind has proven to be really tricky so add a, a hot defense in there and it, it seems like nigh on impossible so they're trying to work out exactly where the disc left the field of play Claire, Cl Claire Gallini brings it in and is stuffed on the mark brilliant from Van Wyk There's a stoppage here, but I think that's for a pick after the turn. Oh, so actually, having said that it was after the turnover, evidently I was wrong. It does happen occasionally. Mark it in your diaries. Today, Benji was wrong. 
I, I wasn't wrong, I just misinterpreted the information. Yeah, we're, we're not seeing a huge amount of communication from the field, so we do have to kind of just try and imagine maybe what the calls are. But uh, It's going to stay in Gallini's hands here. Van Wyk trying to make herself big on the mark once more. Trying to get the Gallini's connecting up line and a brilliant bid from Gonzalez will prevent that happening. Anya Gallini tried to snag it with the trailing edge, but she couldn't get there in time. Really, really smart athletic play uh, from Gonzalez, just recognizing that that's going to go, but taking that line, recognizing where the disc is, having that awareness, it's just, uh, yeah, very impressive. Vass finds a nice little break. The next one is uh, not necessarily as well thrown, but it still works. Guacalaya into Castillo. Castillo goes back to Lebogna. Nyaka have worked themselves out of that horrible corner. But Gravity have been able to get them pinned on that sideline again. And then was that a foot block on the mark I from Chambers? I think it might have been. That definitely uh, was, was blocked as soon as it was out of her hands. And Nyaka uh, oh, just about able to recover. But back in that corner. So let's see if Bass is able to pull off another miracle and get the disc moving. Still count rising. Bass choosing to try and take the deep option. And uh, no one got there in the end. Maybe you could say that Gallini was able to sucker the Yaka receiver into getting too far underneath it. This one too low and goes to ground. Back in for Yaka. This point been a bit of a grind. Fair few turnovers for each side. Wow, threading that right through. That was a risky shot, but brilliantly executed. Le Bon. Going back to Gonzalez. Faking, trying to move that gravity cup around, see if they can create a little bit of space. Bass finds the option through, threads the needle nicely to Guicalea. Now on the far sideline is Gonzalez. Gonzalez goes short. Castillo's not in the end zone yet. Wants to zing this one through. Bass with a little bit of nifty footwork there. Very sly movement for the score there. Bass recognizing where the where the space was. And as you say, doing some fancy footwork to make sure that one's in and no further passes are required. Uh, really, really excellent offense, offense from Yaka. The gravity zone is putting them under so much pressure and I think that those spaces that they're finding in the middle of the field are, are really narrow. There's a, a, a huge level of confidence uh, from Yaka um, to slice some of those shots through uh, what, what have to be incredibly tight windows. The gravity defense is giving them next to nothing, but uh, next to nothing is not nothing. And Yaka are just managing to eke out those options uh, with some really precise, really uh, pinpoint throws, precision throws into the middle just to carve up that, that defense. So a nail-biting semi-final in process. Yaka one break up on gravity and they lead 4-3. Halfway through this first half, while the teams take a timeout, we will do the same and we'll be right back with you after these messages. Meistering immediately launches it deep, got the shot down. No! Don't you dare do this! Finney! Oh my god! Who let you move to Europe? This is disgraceful behaviour! I didn't realise you had a check doppelganger. Don't you look at the camera like and you know what you grab. did. The receiver Honestly. had no chance to actually check his feet. Seems like everyone will agree. We are a group of ultimate players, coaches and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the Ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond.
I love working with the team towards a common goal. For the camaraderie. Camaraderie and playing with my teammates. I play for my team. Teamwork and the connections that I can build on and off field. For the community and the exercise. Because of the community and the competition. I like playing Ultimate Frisbee for the competition. I play for the competition and the fun. For fun. Because fun. I love getting to work hard. You get out of it what you put into it. Leave everything out here. Every time I step on the field, I want to be a better player. You know, give something people to talk about. Be happy, but never satisfied. To step away from real life and focus on Frisbee. I play because I love Ultimate. Find your drive. 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 Welcome back to Ulti TV's coverage of the London Invite Women's Semi Final in progress. Gravity against Yaka. That pool was sinking a little bit, a little bit heart of mouth in moment for me here in the booth as they catch the pool. Yaka up 4 3 here and up a break as well. Gravity trying to bring things level. Trying to run a little give go on this near sideline. Find a space to swing it around. And that one, oh, missed throw. Somehow they got away with it. That should not have worked. It's critical that you're constantly paying attention in these conditions. You never know where the disc is going to go, how it's going to bobble. Great uh, awareness to manage to recover that one. On the sideline now with Farnan. Farnan, this is going to be a very tricky read. Caro Tisson is there to pick up the trash. Kenyaka work the full length of the field for the break. Create a little bit of breathing space between themselves. And the Irish women of gravity. Um, Valet. Going back to Delaval. Valet. Tisson. Finds a little bit of space inside that gravity cut. Rather than try and f find a way through, choosing to go backwards, maybe create a little bit of space, a little bit more movement and momentum. That throw just came out all wrong. Just very little spin on that, just immediately bobbling, blading over and going straight to ground. She was so consistent yesterday. We didn't see anything like that out of her hands then, but that one did not work. Low, well caught. Now Galini pushes through, trying to lead this one, led it way too far out into space from Merkin. If uh, if Gravity haven't put their o put, haven't put their O points in on their first possession, which has only happened once, they've been broken. Yaka will try and maintain that streak here. Delaval. Thinks about Tisson, but puts it back in the locker. Instead, spreads it across the field. Very nearly tempted the bid from balance, but found that window well. Van Wyk. Oh, travel called. Now pops to Valet. It's got Beck Hair back as the reset. Instead of Valet, uh, Delaval on that throw that was sinking quite rapidly. Might go back to Beck Hair here, indeed she does. A little one-two, bouncing it off, and then not sure who the intended target was there. Looking for Chloe Valet, I think, but Valet was static, wasn't moving into that space. So uh... That throw blades, and it's really well read. Had the eyes, obviously, with Perea Slavets, and trying to get it into the middle of the park. Defended by Aka. strategy in that back corner now is clearly launch it and hope for the best. Just get rid of it. This one, they're trying to float it over the top. Gillini's all over it. What can they do now? Looking deep. This could connect. Well defended by Becker. Yaka trying to move the disc quickly before you can hear the call of set, set, set from the gravity sideline. They really don't want to let gravity set this this sort of poachy 
mark out uh, zone has been really effective at, at uh, limiting their options. So desperately trying to get the disc moving before. Unfortunately, they gravity are set now. Yeah, you can't really afford to be holding that disc for too long, as that is a shot. Blimey, what a rocket. An exercise out of the hands of Valet. Zings it through on a frozen rope. Finds Van Wyk in the end zone for the goal. Yaka break once more, it's 5-3. Outstanding look, you know, talking about how uh, stifling the zone is and they just decided if you can't go through it, go over it. Um, quite quite sort of static feel. There wasn't really anyone really moving, but just identifying that there was a, a little bit of separation and puts an absolute zinger over the top into the end zone. Uh, that's the kind of Yaka play where you sort of really see how how confident they are to take those shots, but also how aware they are of, of what their like, throwing capabilities are and, and what their receivers are able to do, because it's sort of a, a level of vision I think a lot of us would shy away from, but Yaka proving that, uh, yeah, they have, they have those fundamentals, they have that sort of tight play and, and, and traditional uh, foundational play down, but they also always are looking for something exciting and interesting uh, to do, and, and that certainly was all of those things. So, so it holds true that if Gravity haven't put in their O point on the first possession, Yaka have been able to get the break. So you're seeing the value of treasuring possession. Bass has the disc in their arms ready to pull. Trying to drift this one down the middle of the field. It sits and it hangs and it floats and Gallini fields it pretty much on our end zone line. Brilliant pull that from Bass. With the wind whipping up, unenviable task here and Bass bids on that throw for Daly but doesn't get there. Claire Gallini swings to Keeley but there's no connection there. Bass thinks about threading it down the sideline. Instead, still count rising, gets the big swing out to Castillo. Castillo continues the momentum down the far sideline. Shot into the end zone. Guaycalaya toes the line brilliantly, or does she? It's Cronier, the thrower. I'm not going to pretend we have a good uh, line of sight on this, but it did look like she caught that with her inside foot down and then just quickly, quickly followed it up with the outside foot. And I think they, uh, they agree on field. Yeah, so again, just having the discussion, but in the end, on the advice of, uh, of the sideline and with her teammates, cool retracted and the goal stands and Yaka pulling away a little bit now, 6-3. If you, uh, if you were going to call a timeout with Gravity and go over to them and have a little team chat, what, what would be your words of advice? Like, how would you guide them to, uh, to getting sort of their heads a little bit more back in this game? I think defensively, they're definitely, like, we've seen that they are getting the turns. That zone is troubling them. But offensively, it is, it is a bit of a struggle. It is a bit of a grind. I just think, you know, being sensible, taking open passes when they're available, so trying to get the disc to the break side, little things like that, just staying with your fundamentals is generally a good plan. What about you? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think you're right. I think they've, I think they've, 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 they've got it. They're just not doing it right now. And I, and I wonder if again we sort of keep talking about the conditions, but they definitely are having a big impact. Um, and if it's just that that level of concentration and just ensuring that um, each pass they're making is weighted right. I mean, I don't know, um, I don't know what the stats are, but uh, the at the moment it does seem to be very much still a case of. Uh, execution errors rather than necessarily sort of decisive blocks. We have seen some great blocks in this game, but uh, the, sort of the volume, I think, of turnovers is, is largely just not accounting for the conditions. Uh, and as you say, it's really just about focusing on getting those fundamentals right, um, which 
I'm sort of, it, it's kind of challenging advice, you know, because of, of course that's what they're going to be trying to do, but they just need to get their heads in the space of uh, this is still a very competitive game and, and they just need to make sure that they, they're getting those basics, nailing those basics. You can see in this, uh, beyond this pitch, the teams of Chevron Action Flash and Kuzbla Foss are warming up for the open semi-final that we're going to be streaming after this game. Just about beat out Clapham versus Wall City in the Patreon vote. The other women's semi-final going on behind us is Box versus Kusp Shout. Pull from Yaka. Evasive action just about taken there by Smith. Centre from Claire Gallini. Farnan goes short to O'Brien. O'Brien to Pichot. Trying to sneak that one up the line, but the defender had the inside track and it is knocked to the turf by Jean Delaval. Delaval really putting in a shift this game. He's been such an important player, getting a number of Ds and also just being such a linchpin on, on offense. Uh, really such a critical player for Yaka. Trying to find a way to thread through the middle of that zone. Matthias, oh, a little bit fluttery, not a problem though. And again, maybe a slight fumble, but Yaka retained possession. The concentration and the focus is writ large across the faces of the players from both sides. Meissel, brilliant find to thread through that cup. Now they can get a little bit off to the races, running the gauntlet on the far sideline. And Matias just puts that one too far out in front of Delaval. But it's trapped on that far sideline, the sideline of death. Or so. so we've come to call it, and you're seeing why there, or are we? Because that might go back on a foul. O'Brien saying there was contact on the arm as she was trying to release that. Definitely the right look, because... Pisha was opening all kinds of space underneath. Oh yeah, that, that was a challenging one. That looked to be very tight. I think, uh, all right, they're agreeing that that was a foul. Uncontested. Uncontested foul. Gravity back with the disc, still on the sideline of death. Back to Gallini, once that inside break, was looking at it for a long time. And so trying to go over the top, dangerous but reeled in well by Chambers, pick. We'll stop things temporarily. Chambers uh, saving, saving that pass that was uh, a bit of a desperation pass, I think. It's really hard that, you know, they did that, had it on that far sideline, but dumped right back into that, into that tricky corner. Um, so just managing to get it off there and, and that sort of heads up awareness that something swirly is probably gonna come out was, was great. And Chambers going with that high release backhand. It's so difficult to try and get that spin on it. And with the, with the conditions as bluster as they are, if you don't put spin on it, it's, uh, it's probably not going to be complete. Chambers shooting down the sideline for O'Brien. Zen's defense well. Still a good shot. It's gained them a lot of field position. Yaka trying to move this disc quickly. And they're doing a good job of not letting the gravity zone really get set into position. As we know how stifling it can be, that is a really strong snag there from Delaval. Meissel. There we are, a little bit of movement and pace about the offense now. Faking deep because there's no continuation. They've worked it nicely beyond halfway. That dump throw fluttered and hits the floor. You're really seeing uh, how important it is to get spin on these throws. Got to generate all that torque on the disc with that snap of the wrist. 
Shooting down the sideline. This should be defended. Meisel gets the block. Yaya. Yeah. Down the sideline, finds a little bit of a seam. Now Yaka playing with a little bit of pace and over through the receiver. You see it so often, you get past that first, second line of defeat of defense. You've got that green grass or grass substitute in front of you and you want to just go, whereas actually, you know, you've got the time potentially just to play it short and be a little bit safer with it. Although gravity can't do anything with the disc. Or yeah, Matthias making a big bid to try and get there, not getting there and then seeing a Gravity giving them the disc right back, and you just—I just saw her wiping the sort of the rubber crumb out of her eyes. Delaval gets fouled on the mark. Chambers, I think, going for uh, going for the foot block and uh, just getting the hand instead. A violation called. Some movement in the stack, I think, before the disc is called back in. So everyone needs to reset, take a breath, calm down. Melina Dabba, I think is the player who was uh, dinged for moving a bit too early. Delaval. Nice little inside throw there to Matthias. That could be a pick and so it might go back. Just going to have a little discussion about it. Check back in. Delaval. Little tricksy inside backhand. And Valet now gives it back to Delaval, who's shooting for the end zone. Wow, how on earth that O managed to avoid the defender, I don't know. But the perfect roll curving trajectory takes it into the end zone as Delaval finds ends for the score. Oh, I loved it. I love that shot. It was, again, just that real confidence. You know, there was uh, Delaval looking down this home sideline, seeing the sort of traditional back of the end zone to the corner cuts, but really well marked, uh, puts the fake in and just sees the space. You know, she sort of, it's not necessarily that one of the cutters was already moving in there, but sees the space, sees some white shirts, um, recognizes that that's probably going to be the best area to attack. Uh, and puts it out in a way that, that really went round that early, that sort of slightly shallower defender and right into their path. I, it, it's, it's sort of, it is maybe slightly riskier play, but I think when you've, when you've got the connections that you have and you've got the ability to really control the disc in that, in that kind of manner, uh, you're, you're sort of moving the percentages ever in your favor. And I, I just think that's a, a really lovely look. Uh, definitely an example, I think, of throwing your receiver open, seeing the space and just, Give me the opportunity to go and play fetch with it almost. Absolutely. I wonder as this game goes on, you see that there's more turns creeping into Gravity's offense that, you know, maybe they're just a little bit more weary. They had a smaller roster coming in. Looks like Jane Linehan and uh, uh, Leanne O'Neill both unable to play so far today. Didn't see them actually in suit up in the game yesterday either. So not just maybe just not the same freshness as the year in the legs is Yaka, who bring a large, deep roster to the table. Now, Lise Becker with the ball. A little bit of outside in shape on it. Lands pretty much dead on the brick mark. Donya Gallini. Trying to break the mark. Handler clears out, scuttles back towards the disc and gets the reset. Thought about the inside throw, looking a little bit static downfield. Galini squeaks free, nice roll curve break around to Doyle. Doyle beckoning cutters underneath. Now with that lovely high release backhand down the line to Galini. Galini putting it to space, but there's no one there. Again, example of seeing the space, giving your player an opportunity, but none of them can catch up to it. Yeah, I, I think it was a good look. It was just a timing issue. Uh, perhaps those cuts needed to be slightly earlier, but 
or, or that throw seems to be held, but it was challenging because when you make that up the line cut and you've really got the momentum with you, you want to be able to carry that through into the throw. Um, it was sort of a, a nice play, but just didn't come together, uh, just a little bit miscalibrated. And if you do holster that, there's always the potential that the force gets in the way. As that uh, scuba, cheeky little look there from Bath, denied by balance for gravity. Yeah, perhaps that's a, we talked about the yak of confidence. Perhaps a little bit maybe needs to be uh, managed slightly. That was a, a risky, risky option uh, when you're on that f on your own end zone line looking into the wind. And, um, and then for the first time this game, Gravity are able to score having been turned over that point. Uh, it looked like to me the defender in the end zone was just completely on the wrong side or the force was on the wrong side. Either way, they were both taking out the same space and it made it a relatively simple throw from Gallini to Doyle for the score. Yeah, an, an interesting moment for Yaka. We saw earlier in that point them playing person-to-person -person defense and doing an incredible job of shutting down uh, the gravity offense. We saw them having to make dump after dump, these little kind of gritty pop passes, losing yards. Um, and and th that was really a testament to the, the, the strength of the Yaka, uh, the pressure of the Yaka defense. Uh, but of course, it's, it's hard to get those things set up after a turn. And I think Yaka maybe just being a little bit slow off the mark there and gravity uh, recognizing that and doing a great job to, to punish them for it. So 7-4, Yaka lead. Still got some breathing room. But gravity definitely still in that rear view mirror, I think. Games played 70 minutes today, or first of 15. Uh, we are not going to get to 15 in this game, that's my bold prediction. So we will, uh, yeah, play the 70 minutes when the Hooter goes, finish the point, cap plus one. As that pool is going to be about halfway, roll slightly back towards gravity end zones, gravity's end zone, where Tisson picks up. Tisson to Munier. Now they're going down that sideline. Here's Le Mercier. Le Mercier centers to Munier. Back to Tisson. Meisel's poached in plenty of space on his near side, but it's an ambitious throw to try and get it there. Tisson finds it superbly, and then from there, one pass into the end zone for the score. That's the risk if you leave the poach. It's a difficult throw to make, but if you can make that throw, as Tisson did. Yeah, just opens the whole thing up and finds a player almost completely unmarked. Again, just a, a gravity player kind of poaching between two two people in the end zone and not able to pick one, has to try and cover both and actually, unfortunately, ultimately ends up covering neither. Um, but yeah, that, that as you said, it, it's a hard shot across the field, but with the Yaka side, you've really got to believe that they're going to throw it. Um, <laughs> an appreciative uh, gentleman on the sidelines seemed to like that play. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's a challenge, but it's, it's Yaka. You know, we've already seen them demonstrate this game this season and, and time and time again uh, that they're not afraid to take those harder shots and they're really gonna gonna nail it. But that uh, means Yaka take half time, eight four. Yeah, it gives them a little bit of a little bit of a cushion going into the second half where they'll be receiving as well coming out of half time. It's an opportunity to extend that advantage. While the two teams make some half time adjustments, get the uh, half time oranges on board. Although I don't think teams do that anymore. We're going to take a little bit of a break here in the booth, but don't go anywhere because the second half of the semi final continues on the other side. Meistering immediately launches it deep. Got the shot down. No! Don't you dare do this, Finney! Oh my God! 
Who let you move to Europe? This is disgraceful behavior. I didn't realize you had a check doppelganger. Don't you look at the camera like you know what you did. The receiver had no chance to actually check his feet. Seems like everyone will agree. We are a group of ultimate players, coaches, and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and, and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the Ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. I love working with a team towards a common goal. For the camaraderie. Camaraderie and playing with my teammates. I play for my team. Teamwork and the connections that I can build on and off field. For the community and the exercise. Because of the community and the competition. I like playing Ultimate Frisbee for the competition. I play for the competition and the fun. For fun. Because fun. I love getting to work hard. You get out of it what you put into it. Leave everything out here. Every time I step on the field, I want to be a better player. You know, give something people to talk about. Be happy, but never satisfied. To step away from real life and focus on Frisbee. I play because I love Ultimate. Find your drive. 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 Welcome back to Ulti TV's coverage of the London Invite here from Grasshoppers Rugby Club in West London. Women's semi final, second half getting underway. Yaka receiving up 8 4, and Meisel looking big towards the end zone. Galini climbs the ladder and knocks it away. Gravity looking for a much needed break to begin the second half, but that's not the way to do it. Back in play with Yaka. A hold here might just about put this game to bed. We'll give them a five point lead. Bass. Central to Matias. Delaval now spreads it out wide, Gonzalez. Yaka just content to swing, take a couple of yards each time before Bass. Just with a short little backhand to Castillo at the front of the end zone. O'Brien bids but doesn't get there. That will make it 9-4. Yeah, great great effort from O'Brien, but just a bit too far off, a bit behind. Uh, unable to close that gap and just after that bid, just taking a, a brief moment lying on the floor. Uh, obviously just feeling a little bit... Uh, a little bit hard done by, a little bit frustrated. It's really hard. Gravity have a really big job, not just looking at the scoreboard, but also mentally, you know, the get going a few points down in a game. And, and as you say, the, the gap is a, a significant one. Um, it's, it's incredibly challenging to get your head back in and kind of keep that idea of uh, we're competitive, we're uh, able to contest all of these points and all of these passes, uh, which we definitely saw from them earlier in the game, you know, they really had that energy and had that focus. And as the scoreline drifts uh, not in their favour, it can be very hard to maintain that. So the other women's semi-final is going on behind us. During the half-time break, Rachel was able to do a little bit of a beavering away to see if they could uh, see if you could uncover the score. What have you, what have you found? Um, oh, well, I object to the term beavering away just generally, but uh, I did I, a I wasn't spr meant. <laughs> sprint over there. Um, and uh, it's 11-4. Uh, uh, Shout currently having a, 
a dominant showing over there against Box from Vienna. Yeah, Kusp Schau didn't had a lot of tight games yesterday. They beat Gravity 10-8. They beat Bristol 12-10 and they beat Spice 10-8, so they only won all their games by two. So their score differential in that semi-final is so far better than all of their games yesterday when you put them together. It's funny how things work out. Seems like the people made the right decision in streaming this game. That one just bobbles out of Gallini's hands and then lands right back in a lap. quite flat the front of this Yaka defense, forcing them to make these lateral passes. Low release or just about threaded through, but doesn't get the target. LeBourne's there to knock it to the turf. Oh, immediate D. Number 48, Doyle reading that really well. A, a quick and decisive intercept to get the disc back for gravity. Definitely what the Dubliners needed. And this is the last step before Worlds for many sides. These teams looking to strut their stuff on the world stage in Cincinnati for the World Ultimate Club Championships next month. Luba finds it through to Gonzalez. And now playing with pace. Shooting towards the end zone. The throw dies a little bit, not a problem. Van White goes to the floor, makes the catch, and Yaka really are pulling away a little bit now. The Yaka offense, when it flows, it just really flows. They just look unstoppable. And Gravity, of course, have, have been able at times to temper that and actually have managed to intercept and stop it in its tracks at times. But it just that was such a great illustration there of when they get the disc moving, it's, it's so decisive and they really know how to utilize the space. Uh, they don't seem to be too fussed by the wind. We have seen a few execution errors from them uh, where maybe they haven't set themselves well enough and, and the throws have kind of bobbled in the wind and, and not been completed. But generally, generally they look unfazed. And we spoke earlier in the game about gravity perhaps being the team that's more used to playing in these kinds of conditions. Um, and, and, and whether that's true or not, I'm not sure, but Yaka definitely showing that, that it, it's not phasing them. Um, and whether it's, it's the conditions or perhaps the, the pressure from Yaka that, that Gravity are really responding to, either way, there doesn't seem to be that same level of kind of confidence uh, that we're seeing from the, the Irish side as opposed to, to what the, the French are bringing to the table. Yeah, at the start of this game, it looked like uh, Gravity were, were the better side on offense and Yaka were having to grind out for their offense but uh, that script has definitely been flipped in the latter half of this game. I nearly said that flip has definitely been script but I caught myself just in time. And then you, and then you did it anyway. <laughs> yeah, it, it made me chuck, it made me laugh uh, internally so I thought I'd put it out there. We need to show the people that we're human. Oh yeah. Low pull. Gravity let it drop before getting their offense in motion. See more more errors from gravity in these last points. Just some some pops out of the hands, a few just careless drops. Uh, really a big challenge when they're trying to stay competitive in this game. Tisson. Takes a couple of times downfield, eventually finds a shot that C likes and threads it down the sideline. We did it a couple of times, didn't like the, the, first, uh, the first, uh, first couple of opportunities, but at the third time of asking, sees the window and squeezes it in to say Munier. That'll make it 11-4 now which you said was the same scoreline you saw in the other semi-final. Yeah, maybe we said the words and, and manifested so it, it becomes prophecy. Yeah, so uh, he gave the people the choice of which game to vote for and uh, in the end, it turns out that neither game looks like particularly being that close, but then, hey, that's the way it plays out sometimes. And those of you who had money on a Yaka Cusp final at the start of the tournament, Looks like that might. Looks like that may well have paid off. I'm sure you wouldn't have got good odds on that bet, though. That's uh, 
the kind of a matchup that we see time and time again, and, I, and it's always a, an excellent game. As you mentioned, Kusp Shout perhaps starting the tournament a little bit shakier, um, you know, winning games, um, but but also perhaps not not by the points margin that we might have come to expect uh, from such a kind of a, a passionate and a talented side, um, but definitely looking like they might have shaken off some of that uh, those cobwebs and, and, and be gelling really well over there on that far field against box um, taking taking that game away and I think judging from what we've seen on this field it's gonna really shape up to be an exciting final so there's two sides seem to be on a collision course but of course there is always the, the potential for a comeback cleaning with a very demonstrative fake Doyle, one of the main downfield threats for this gravity side. Pops it back to Galini. Thought a little bit there out right over top. I could see it in see it in their eyes, but decided to put it back in the locker on this occasion with this wind. It's a decision that makes sense. Oh, Gus is really picking up here. Galini just floats that one forward to balance. Balance, can't connect with Pareja Slavets. It was ni nice offensive movement from Gravity and again, just on that kind of, as soon as they try and push it that little bit, just not able to connect, not able to come down with it. It, it looked like she had a good play on that disc, but maybe it's a lack of focus, it's un unclear, but another turnover generated by Gravity and gifted to Yaka. Gonzalez, option downfield, oh hello, there's a stall out called. Either that or everyone's suddenly become very confused. Games are over. There's the, uh, the thoroughly disappointing hooter. So we will finish the point, add one to the highest score and that'll be our cap. I think this looks like being contest. No, nope. retracted. Gonzalez, in the shadow of her own end zone, wants to swing wide. Just about gets that one through. Becker, this is going to float, but reeled in regardless. A little bit of a miscommunication between Eber and Becker, who came into the cup, but I think the throw was behind anyway. And they're going to say that the turnover stands. Yeah, it, I think that's the right call there. D d the throw was already lost by the time the contact happened, and it was sort of both of them running into the same space. So I think no call, turnover is the right resolution. Gallini fakes the underneath look. Handler clears through. And a creative blade over the top. Lovely way to free that player up. Farnan has it. Swinging into the backfield and just slipping through gravity hands. It's been that sort of game for them as this is a, as this has worn down. Yeah, and I think that actually probably is, is what's really kind of been the difference in the second half. Those first points so contested. Both, toys, both teams making some errors, uh, but really... This half, we've seen uh, quite a few uh, lack, uh, breaks in concentration from gravity. Um, and then we see uh, one right back from, from Yaka. Unusual that from uh, Elise Becker. Just throws it straight into the AstroTurf. Galini will pick up. Wants to break around to start this. Got plenty of time and could have done actually with a bit of communication from her teammates that you don't have to take this so early. You can adjust. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, a shame. She really could have turned around, but not to worry. Number 54, Dali is going to come in with the block, get the disc back for gravity right on the end zone line. Can they punch it in? Here is the aforementioned Daly. I thought they were going to squeeze that down the sideline, but they think better of it. Wanting to reset to Galini. 
Kalini, wow, just about jips that one into Daly. I'm not sure how much she knew about it or whether it was just on her by the time she looked up. But either way, gravity score for the first time in a long, long while. This was three all once upon a time. Since then, it's been an eight one run for the French, but gravity back on board now for 11-5. It'll be a game to 12. Yeah, and uh, it's, I mean, Gravity will be disappointed with the scoreline of the game, particularly when they started it so competitively. But also, the sort of bigger picture, uh, this tournament is, as you mentioned earlier, you know, the kind of the last stop for most of these teams before they are going to Cincinnati to compete at the World Club Championships. Um, and uh, these sorts of hard, hard losses uh, can actually just be so incredibly uh, informative for the teams, really give them so much to think about, um, so much to reflect on. Uh, which are really going to be critical adjustments to make now. You know, they still have a few weeks before they're going to need to be in Cincinnati and fighting fit, ready to go. So, uh, if you, you know, if you're going to have a game like this, this is the place to do it. And uh, against a side like Yaka that will really punish you, um, it's a great place to kind of have to to, to make those adjustments and to, to figure out what you need to change because there are going to be many, many teams at the World Championships who are going to come out firing um, and really, you know, put a lot of pressure on. So. It won't be, this game won't have gone how gravity had intended, but uh, potentially big picture thinking, it could be uh, a really useful, a useful thing for them moving forward. Yeah, that old adage of even if you, uh, even if you lose the game, make sure that you don't lose the lesson. So Yaka, one point away from victory here. Playing it around the front of that zone nicely. Mysore wants it all in one. Oh, it is tipped, and if you don't catch your tee, that is what happens. I'm sorry, Claire Gallini. It feels like a cruel way to end it, but left the door open, and it just bounced right into Yaka's hands, and they will take their spot in the final later today with a 12-5 victory. I mean, a, a, a brutal, brutal way to end the game, but honestly kind of feels a little bit representative of, of, of how the play has progressed. You know, a good effort from gravity, but you know, if you don't absolutely nailed it, uh, Yaka are going to take advantage um, of, of everything you give them. So uh, catch your Ds, catch your passes. Don't be giving those easy turnovers. Um, but yeah, Yaka with a, a decisive victory on this field. Um, and the other, the other semi-final is still ongoing. Um, it's unlikely that Box will have been able to close that gap, but uh, that, that scoreline is yet to be finalised. Yeah, so 12-5 final score here. We've got a couple of minutes before the next game starts. Open semi-final action with Kuz Blafotta, the powerhouses out of Bologna, taking on the UK's Chevron Action Flash. Uh, Ulti TV's coverage of the London Invite continues on the other side.
Safety.tv.